I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness You will hear a number of different recordings and you'll have to answer questions on what you hear There'll be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you'll have a chance to check your work all the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you'll be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You'll hear someone booking transport for a trip. First, you have some time to look at questions one and two. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 and 2. Good morning, Burnham Coaches. Sarah speaking. How can I help you? Ah, yes. Good morning. I'm a teacher at the Down Language School. We have a bit of a problem and I was wondering if you could help us out. What is the problem exactly? Well, we normally take our students on an excursion at the end of their course. But unfortunately, the coach firm we normally use has let us down. It seems they've gone out of business. I'm sorry to hear that. I suppose you are looking for a replacement. Well, yes. We won't need a very large coach, actually. There will be 30 students and four teachers. So that's 34 in all. And what dates did you have in mind? The last Saturday and Sunday of this month. That's the 28th and 29th. The 28th and 29th. Does that mean you are planning to stay somewhere overnight? That's right. Actually, we want to do the same excursion that we do every year. We usually visit Stonehenge, Salisbury, and stay overnight in Bath. It's a historical tour, really. It sounds interesting. Let me just see what we have available. Oh dear, I'm afraid all our coaches are booked out for the 28th. It's the busiest time of the year for us, actually. I was afraid that would be a problem. But you have a coach available for the 29th? Yes, we do. And it's available for the 30th as well, if that's any help to you. I'm afraid not. Sunday is the last day. The students go home on Monday. I think we'll just have to change our plans a bit and leave out Salisbury. It's a shame, but I don't think we can fit in all three places in one day. So, you would like to book the coach for the 29th, visiting Stonehenge and Bath, is that right? Yes, I think so. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 3 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 3 to 10. Right, I just need a few details, sir. OK. My name is Paul Scott. S-C-O-T? It's double T, actually. I'm sorry. And it's the Down Language School. Could you give me the address for that, Mr Scott? Yes, it's Down House... Hill Street, Brighton.
Do you need the postcode? No, that's not necessary, but I do need a contact number. Of course. The number for the school secretary is 01273-512-634. You can contact her if you need to speak to anyone. Right, and what time would you like the coach to pick you up? Well, I think we'll have to make an early start. Would 7.30 be all right? Yes, no problem at all. What time do you want to be back? Oh, any time between 10 and 11 will be all right. Not later than 11, though. Right, I'll make a note of that. 11 p.m. latest. There's just one more thing I need to know. Presumably, you'll be visiting Stonehenge first. How long do you want to stay there? Well, we normally stay about an hour. The main objective of the excursion is for the students to see the Georgian architecture in Bath, really. Yes, Bath is lovely, isn't it? I was there myself a couple of years ago. I thought the Royal Crescent was absolutely stunning. I hadn't realised how large it is. Well, I think that's all I need to know, Mr Scott. Thank you for booking with us. Just a minute. There's one thing you seem to have forgotten. How much will this cost? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I was thinking about Bath. Just bear with me a moment. Yes, it's a round trip of 300 miles and a total time of 16 hours for the driver. For a 45-seater coach, that will be a total of £500, including tax and insurance. Do we have to have such a large coach? There are only 34 of us. We don't have any smaller coaches, I'm afraid. Oh, well. At least we won't be cramped for space. When do we have to pay? We require a 20% deposit to confirm the booking. I suggest that you do that as soon as possible, today if you can. The balance you can give to the driver if you're paying by cheque. Have the cheque made out to Burnham Coaches. I think that'll be all right. I will have to check this with the school accountant, but if all is well, I'll arrange for someone to bring you the deposit within the next two hours. That'll be fine, Mr Scott. Well, thank you very much indeed. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. You'll hear someone talking to a group of university students. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Upton University. I hope you are settling in and beginning to find your way around. I know how confusing it can be when you start life at university, and that's why we have Freshers' Week to help you find your feet. Before I go any further, I should perhaps introduce myself. My name is Sally Jackson, and I am the Secretary of the Students' Union, which has organized this week of events for you. You will usually find me in the office on the first floor of this building when I'm not attending lectures. Anyway, down to business. Of course, there are a few things that you are obliged to get done during your first week here, 
But once you've opened a bank account, if you haven't got one already, senior director of studies to discuss which courses you are going to take and signed up with a doctor, there will be plenty of time left to enjoy the events we have arranged for the week. And have we got a lot lined up for you. Throughout the week from Monday to Friday, every morning starting at 10 a.m., there will be orientation and welfare events. These will include tours of the campus, which, as you have probably noticed, is the size of a small town with 9,000 residential students, as well as sessions on developing study skills. We also have tours of Upton itself arranged for you with a bus leaving from outside this building every afternoon at 5 o'clock. There are a number of interesting things to do and see in and around Upton, so you can expect visits to the castle and museum as well as the popular ghost walk. You'll need to sign up for this one as numbers are limited. Just put your name on the list on the notice board in the entrance lobby. An important event is scheduled for Monday, that's the day after tomorrow, when we will be holding the academic fair. This is an opportunity for you to speak to students and academic staff about the courses that are on offer. The academic fair starts at 1 o'clock, by the way. There are a couple of other fairs that I think will interest you. First of all, we have the Society's Fair on Tuesday the 16th, which I think is an absolute must. You might not believe it, but the university has over 150 societies and sports clubs you can sign up for, so you are sure to find something of interest to you. That also starts at 1 o'clock, and it will be here in the Union Building. Also in this building is the Trade Fair on Wednesday from 2 until 5 in the afternoon. This one might sound a bit strange because you will find a load of banks and other businesses here trying to get your custom. You will find plenty of bargains and, best of all, a lot of the businesses give away stuff for free. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. We've also got a great entertainment program lined up for you, starting tonight with our welcoming party. We have a top band lined up for your entertainment, but I'm not allowed to say who they are. All I can say is that I am sure you will not be disappointed. So come along to Blackmore Hall at 9 o'clock this evening to get your university experience off to a flying start. Just one point. I'm afraid this event is limited to freshers only. Because of space restrictions, you can't bring a friend tonight. Sorry about that. There's more fun and games on Monday in the Cotswold Theater here on campus. We have booked two of the cleverest comedians in the country, Paul Frazier and Jenny Brown, for a three-hour show. Paul has assured us that he and Jenny have packed the show with new material, and as they always get rave reviews for their shows, I think we can look forward to an evening of great entertainment. That's in the Cotswold Theater on Monday evening at 7.30. Moving along a bit, on Thursday, there is an important date for your diaries. This is the official Freshers' Opening Ceremony, when the Dean welcomes you to Upton University. So remember, Thursday the 18th from 2.30 to 3.30 in Blackmore Hall. You certainly should go to this one, and by the way, light refreshments will be available. 
At the end of the week on Saturday, you have the chance to dress up in your smartest evening wear for the official Freshers Ball. Actually, although it's called a ball, it is quite a relaxed affair, so we are more than happy if you turn up wearing jeans and a t shirt. The important thing is to relax and enjoy yourselves. Time and place are the same as for this evening's party. Blackmore Hall from nine in the evening to three o'clock in the morning. Right. I think I've covered the most important and exciting events we have lined up for you, but there will be plenty of other things going on throughout the week, so remember to check the notice board in the entrance lobby regularly. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible this evening at the welcoming party. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear two students, Ramil and Kirsten, discussing presenting a paper at an architecture conference. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 21 to 28. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 28. Hi, Kirsten. Have you heard about that architecture conference in Oxford at the end of the year? Yeah, I saw the leaflet on the notice board. As it's my final year, I ought to try giving a paper, but I've got no idea how to go about it. Oh, I think you should go for it. <sighs> I did one last year. It's quite straightforward. First of all, you need to see what the conference themes are. You know, what topics they are covering. Mm. You can do that by looking it up on the website. You need to submit a paper that falls into one of the categories they give you. Oh, that may give me some ideas. Then, while you're doing that, you should also have a look at the information on how to submit your paper. Mm. The rules, if you like, such as the length. It's important you follow those. I see. And then I suppose the next stage is to start writing it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to use it as an opportunity to propose some future work. But I understand it must be based on current work. Still, there's plenty to choose from. It makes sense to do something that I'm more familiar with. Yes. And the other thing is, when you've written it up, then go back and look at your data carefully and make certain that you've presented it in a format that is standard for your subject. Uh. Remember, people have to absorb information very quickly while they're listening. Don't make it too complicated. OK, well, I reckon that'll take me about a month to get that sorted. Then the next thing I have to do, I guess, before I send it off to the conference organizer, is give the whole thing to the events officer so that he can look through it and see if it all makes sense and is OK. Yeah. Remember to warn him that it's en route so he can fit it into his schedule. Oh. Then you're done, really. All you have to do after that is to go through it and sort out any changes you need to make. Then finally, you can submit it. You can do that online. Phew! Good. Then I just wait to hear, I suppose. How long does that take? Mm, it depends, but usually about six weeks. Oh. When you hear if your paper has been accepted, then at that stage, 
it's worth giving them a list of any technical things you need when you actually give the talk. Mm-hmm. A screen or video players or that sort of thing. Okay, but that's a long way off. Mm. <laughs> and I know that if my paper is accepted, then at that stage, I have to give them a short text about myself and my academic background so that they can put it in the brochure. <sighs> Famous at last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You now have half a minute to read questions 29 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 29 to 30. Right, well, I've got to get a couple of things sorted if I'm going to get this paper completed. Have you got enough data? Possibly. I'd like to reinforce some of it, though, so I thought I'd send out some more questionnaires. I was looking at that thesis that Angela wrote last year, and she said you need a sample of over a hundred to be sure of your results. I think some of this year's postgraduates are doing some of the same stuff as you on buildings. Why don't you talk to them? Uh, I'll end up getting confused. It would be more useful for me to actually go out to that site by the rail bridge to see how they're building the new factory. Oh. I managed to get hold of Professor Barnett at London University, and he said I should go out and take pictures. I'm pretty busy, but I'll have to make time. Anyway, what about you? What are your plans? That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answer. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk from a member of the Conservation Society talking about green cleaning. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 34. Now, listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 34. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here as a representative of the Conservation Society to talk to you about green cleaning. In other words, about ways you can help to save the environment at the same time as saving money. I'll start with saving money, as we're all interested in that, especially students who are living on a tight budget. Probably none of you has sat down and calculated how much you spend on cleaning products each year, everything from dishwashing detergent, window cleaners and so on, through to shampoos and conditioners for your hair, and then those disasters products to get stains out of carpets or to rescue burnt saucepans. I can see some nods of agreement. Even if you don't spend a lot of time on housework, you'd end up spending quite a lot of money over a period of time, wouldn't you? We can save money on products and also use products which are cheap, biodegradable and harmless to the environment. These I will call green products. 
Unfortunately, most cleaning products on sale commercially are none of these, and many of our waterways and oceans are polluted with bleach, dioxins, phosphates and artificial colourings and perfumes. Also, think how many plastic bottles each household throws away over a year. They'll still be around in landfill when you are grandparents. So we often feel there's nothing we can do to make a difference, but we can. The actual recipes are on handouts you can take at the end of the talk. The sorts of ingredients I'm referring to are things like bicarbonate of soda, eucalyptus oil, ammonia, vinegar, lemons, pure soap. Lastly, many people find they are allergic to modern products. So for all you asthma sufferers, keep listening. Nothing in these recipes should cause you any problems. An end to itching and wheezing. Now you have some time to look at questions 35 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 35 to 40. So let's start with spills and stains. Soda water is wonderful as an immediate stain remover. Mop up the excess spill, don't rub, but apply soda water immediately. It's great for tea, coffee, wine, beer and milk as is salt or bicarbonate of soda, which will absorb the stain. Then vacuum when dry and shampoo if necessary. While we're talking about disasters, let's quickly look at some others that can be avoided. Bicarbonate of soda is wonderful for removing smells, especially in the fridge. An open box in the fridge will eliminate smells for up to three months and those terrible burnt saucepans, either sprinkle with our good friend bicarb again and leave it to stand, or cover with vinegar and a layer of cooking salt. Bring it to the boil and simmer for 10 minutes, then wash when cool. Much cheaper than a new saucepan. Then there are heat rings on wooden furniture. Simply rub with a mixture of salt and olive oil or for scratched furniture, use olive oil and vinegar. Now, let's look at general cleaning. First, the floors. If your floor covering is made of slate, cork or ceramic tiles or lino, it probably only needs a mop or a scrub with vinegar in a bucket of water. Carpets can be shampooed using a combination of pure soap, washing soda, cloudy ammonia and some boiling water. You put a small amount of this mixture onto the mark on the carpet, rub with a cloth until it lathers and then wipe off the excess. A smelly carpet can be deodorized by sprinkling bicarbonate of soda on the surface, leaving overnight and vacuuming off the next day. Cleaning in the kitchen, bathroom and toilet is the next section. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll
follow a show what and make a straight man everything i do so instinctive and so passionate every word i move so descriptive like an adjective i got a vendetta against people who patent it being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks this and that spitting slow spitting fast I could roast I could gas think I'm okay at last but I don't know if that can erase all the past and the pettiness a reflection of the emptiness hilarious you think you're worth my time you're delirious mysterious because you are behind a fake exterior inferior you know I'll always be a bit superior get off of me this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains that last and to believe in what you got it was built to last yeah Now that I've been put through